here's where we're at as far as talking about mobile web development. Way back at the beginning of class, we talked about HTML. And we said HTML is for the content of a web page. All right, that was sort of our basic statement. We then talked about CSS is for the appearance and layout of the page. And then combined together, this forms a web page that the user sees. Now, we then went on to say that we could easily apply different CSS files to the same HTML and get a page that looked a lot different. All right, so we could have CSS1, we could have different CSS and a different appearance and so on down the line. We saw that both in our own work, some of the own assignments we had, you had to do two style sheets for the same web page. And we also saw when we looked at CSS Zen Garden, a great example of that because the pages look nothing alike, and yet they're the same HTML. They just have different CSS applied. So that was what we made through throughout um, the first part of this class until we started talking about mobile. Add in the notion of mobile. And the idea of mobile is that we typically want the appearance to be simpler. The content is going to be the same or at the least similar. So the content might not be exactly the same. We may, for example, simplify mobile versions of a page and get rid of some content, get rid of images or content that really isn't needed in the mobile case. Or it might be the same content. It depends. So that brought on the idea of responsive design, and we talked about things such as using percentages for, for sizes instead of pixels and so on. And now we're going to talk about what are called media queries. Media queries are that we can apply to one CSS file, or I'm sorry, to one HTML file, we can apply multiple CSS within the same web page. So HTML page can combine with CSS1 and have one version of the page. Then we can take and apply that same CSS plus an additional CSS file to come up with a different version of the page. We can apply more than one CSS file to the same page. Now you might ask, when, when can you do that? Why would you want to do that? Why not just combine all the CSS into one file? Why have two files? The thing is, is with media queries, the second CSS fi uh, file is only applied some of the time. This CSS file is always applied. All right. And in that way, we get two different page layouts. Page layout one is when CSS1 is the only file applied. Page layout two is where CSS1 and CSS2 is applied. Now, we have two strategies to do this. We can take two approaches. 
So far, I've spoken very generically, and I've said CSS1 and CSS2. One is called progressive enhancement, one of the strategies. Progressive enhancement works like this. CSS1 is the basic mobile CSS. CSS2 is the complex desktop CSS. CSS1 will always get applied. CSS2 will only be applied if the user is not on a mobile device, but on a computer. The opposite of progressive enhancement is called graceful degradation. And in that case, CSS1 is the full, complex, desktop version of the site that always gets applied. CSS2 is the mobile version, which is applied only on mobile devices. Now, when would you use one versus the other? For the most part, if you were starting from scratch, like you're doing in most of the assignments in this class, you're starting from scratch, you would use progressive enhancement. So you'd lay out the page the way you wanted it to look like on a mobile device. You would then, in your second style sheet, add the things, add the features, add the formatting, add the layout that you would want to apply to a desktop version of the site. All right? In this example, CSS2 contains pretty much additions. In other words, we're adding more extra stuff. In this example, graceful degradation, that would be done if you started out with an organization that had a website, let's say, but they did, it didn't work well on a mobile format. It looked ugly on a mobile format. It was too complicated for a mobile format. What you might do then is you might take their current CSS and create a second CSS file that simplified or eliminated stuff. All right? So in both cases, you end up with two versions of your website. You have the desktop and the mobile version. It's just a matter of do you first style the desktop and then go to the mobile version, or do you first style the mobile version and then move to the desktop version? So I have an example of the same, uh, of both of these techniques. All right, and we'll start off looking at progressive enhancement because that's the one that you want to use most of the time. Because most of the time, like in this class, um, you will be building something from scratch. All right, um, so we'll talk about that one first because you know if if you wanted to go and do a website for a nonprofit organization that didn't have a website or they wanted a brand new website, this would be the approach that you'd take. So I'm going to pull this up in the browser. And again, keep in mind this is an example. There's, so there's some things in it that, that you know, uh, were done just to demonstrate things. They're not necessarily meant to be the best. Uh, screen? Yeah. Right. Right. How particular, like, if it's your product, like, if it's your product, 
uh, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a real good question. Um, the question was, is like for a first job or even an internship, how, um, how, what level of quality would they expect? And that's a, that's a real good question. And unfortunately, I can't answer that because it would really depend on the particular client. Uh, a good organization, um, like for an internship, uh, wouldn't leave you by yourself. They would, they would be working, you'd be working with someone within the organization that would sort of mentor you and guide you down the right path and make it clear what you were doing and, and whether it needed uh, changed or not. Um, beyond that, um, to get a job, a full-time job as a developer, typically you would want some sort of, the expectation would be that there would be some familiar with JavaScript, I would think. As far as animations and all that, um, not necessarily. Um, but when you get to that point, it's not really that hard to, to do, uh, believe it or not, the animations. There's a lot of things that are done in CSS for you. And there's actually some libraries that you can use that, that make your job easier. So uh, minimally, I would think uh, someone doing web development uh, ought to be proficient in HTML, CSS, and some JavaScript to do the front end work, it's called, to do the, the, the pages. To do the back end work, uh, typically that would involve knowing things like SQL um, and certain server side platforms like maybe Python or uh, PHP or um, ASP.NET or uh, JSP pages or so on. All right, good question. All right, we're going to look at this in the browser. And there is what the browser version looks like. Again, notable things is that it has three columns, it has a background image, um, it has white text on the pattern background, and it has an image. All right. Let's view this. within the mobile browser. Now, how do you do that? Um, if you're running Google Chrome, you can run an, an emulator. Um, there's also the Opera uh, emulator for mobile devices as well that, that emulates what it will look like uh, on a mobile device. How do you get to it from Chrome? You click the three dots, more tools, developers tools. Click on this little icon here. And you can pick what you want it to emulate. So we can pick what it would look like on an iPhone 6. We can look what it would look like on a Nexus, and so on. Notice that it looks a lot different. I mean, let's notice the differences. No background, not white font. The image is just missing, all right? It's not on the mobile version at all. And the navigation is oriented vertically on the, the desktop version, and it's oriented horizontally on the mobile version. So let's go and see how this happens. All right. So I'm going to go and edit the HTML page. And you'll notice I would actually move these up here. Doesn't really matter, but probably a good idea. Notice I have two style sheets. I have what I call the base style sheet, and then I have the desktop style sheet. Now, what happens when you have two style sheets? If there's any conflict between the two, if there's any attribute that is in both of them, the second one wins. All right? This is one case where the order does matter. I think in a lot of cases, uh, when we were dealing with just one style sheet, people have asked me, like, does it matter what order you put things in, so on and so forth. And it usually doesn't matter what order you put things in. But in this case, it does matter. The second style sheet, if there's two attributes that the, the, the two style sheets have in common, then the second one wins. All right? 
So, in this case, everyone gets the first style sheet. Because that's just an external style sheet like we've had since week three. Link type equals text CSS, rel equals style sheet, href equals base CSS. Everyone gets that style sheet. Notice the second style sheet, though. It's the same up till here. From here on, there is a media query. Media queries start with the word media. All right? Enclosed in the quotes are the conditions under which this style sheet applies. So style sheet 2 doesn't always apply. It only applies in the case of the conditions that we have listed here. And these are a little hard to decipher, so I'll, I'll decipher them. This applies only for screens. Well, what does screen mean? Screen means computer screen. All right? So when you see the uh, only screen, it means only for computer screens does this apply. All right? Now, in a perfect world, that's all we would need to do. However, unfortunately, in the early days of mobile devices, there were some mobile browsers that lied and said that they were computer screens. Not making this up. They did. And therefore, part two is included. And minimum device width is 601 pixels. The idea here is that if it was 600 pixels or less, it's not a computer monitor, all right? It's a mobile device lying to you, all right, and telling you that it is a computer screen. So therefore, this will apply if it is, uh, if the browser is identifying itself as a computer screen that's at least 601 pixels wide. So, this is a computer screen. It's definitely bigger than 601 pixels, the, the screen. Therefore, this style sheet applies when I view it on the desktop. All right? So, I'll always get style sheet one. Sometimes I get style sheet two. Yes? No, you don't always. You can play around with that. Uh, again, this, you know, this example was written so many years ago. 600 was like sort of reasonable to say. Because there could still be some monitors. Well, um, I suppose, yeah. It, you, can, you can gear that to, to what you, you can gear the actual size to what that is. More modern phones, all, the, the screen typically applies. Um, so mobile devices, this is more or less a catch for the old mobile phones. All right, so a low number is probably good because a, uh, an old mobile phone will probably have a screen that's less than 600 pixels wide. All right, whereas new ones will correctly identify themselves as not being a computer screen. Okay, let's look at these two CSS files. Let's look first at the base CSS file. This applies to everyone. So this is the version that everyone gets as their starting point. Now, in the case of the mobile devices, this is the only style sheet they get, because mobile devices don't fit this criteria. So style sheet 2 does not apply for mobile devices. Style sheet 2, however, does apply for desktop uh, devices. So desktop computers get this rule, too. So here's style sheet one, here's style sheet two. So let's find something it has in common. Body, font family Helvetica, Arial, and sans serif. Whoops. In the base. So the Mobile version of this, if we look at the font, is a sans serif font. All right? Helvetica, Arial, and sans serif. So this is Arial. Let's look in the second style sheet, though. The second style sheet, which applies only to desktop devices, 
The Fon family is defined as Garamond and Sans Serif, or Garamond and Serif. So if we look at the desktop version, the font is a serif font, is Garamond. So, in other words, both of the files have font family included in them, but the way that CSS works is the second one wins if it's applied. And in our case, the second one's applied only to desktop browsers. So the desktop browser gets both of these style rules, so whatever these two have in common, for desktops, this is going to win. So one thing they have in common is the font family. Whereas in the second one, the font family is a Garamond and a Serif font. Therefore, if we view this in a desktop browser, it's Garamond, which is a Serif font. If we view it in a mobile browser, it doesn't get that second style rule because the media query ruled it out for mobile devices, and therefore, this is what you get. Yes? percent of whatever it's contained in. So percent, like nav says a percent uh, is a width of 30 percent. The nav link is just inside the body. So that would be 30 percent of the body. It would be 30 percent of that. Now, um, if the nav link was contained in a section, let's say, and the section was 50%, and I said the nav was 30%, it would then be 30% of the 50%. So whatever the container is, that's what a percentage relates to. And if there's nothing, like this isn't contained in anything but the body tag, right? It's not part of the header, all right? Therefore, 30% would be 30% of the body. If I put the nav in the section, and the section has a width, then it would be 30% of whatever the section's width was. All right, let's look at some other things they have in common. The header in the base version is, has a width of 100% and this kind of border. There's no style rule in the header, uh, for the header in the second one. Therefore, this applies for everyone, right? There's nothing in the second one that overrules what's in the first one. So the header on both the desktop and the mobile version is going to be 100% of the width, and it's going to have a one pixel solid black border. So if we look, it's 100%, 100%, and it might be a little hard to see, but it has a one pixel solid black border in both of them. Let's go back to a second. For, uh, for a second to the body. Because there are some things in the desktop version that aren't in the base version. So they will apply again to the desktop version. Namely, the desktop version has a background URL. So on a mobile device, there's no background URL. So there's no background at all. All right? Uh, and therefore, it goes to the browser default, which is white. Desktop CSS has a background image of something or other .png, and therefore, on the desktop version of the page, that's the background image that displays. So, if there's something in the base that isn't in the markup, everyone gets it. Uh, I'm sorry, I said markup, I meant desktop. There's something in the base version of the CSS that's not in the desktop version of the CSS that everyone gets it, because everyone gets the base CSS file. If there's something in the desktop that isn't in the base, then o only the desktop version gets it. And if there's something in both, then the mobile gets the base, right, and the desktop gets what's in the desktop. CSS. Let's look at the nav now. The nav in the base, the width is 100% and the border is one pixel solid red. In the desktop, 
the nav has a width of 30%, a minimum width of 200, uh, 200 pixels, and float left. So if we view this, the nav, 100% for the mobile device. On the desktop version, 30% with a minimum width of 200%, uh, 200 pixels. So if I make this smaller, it's going to get smaller. And it's floated to the left, so at a certain point, these columns are going to drop down. Yes? Yes, absolutely. Um, and again, keep in mind that one thing that we said with, with responsive design is that um, the page sort of takes the shape of the container. It's, it's fluid, all right? And therefore, you'll be using a lot of floats. Notice again, both of them, oops, both of them have a one pixel red border. Why? Because that was in the base and it wasn't overruled in the desktop. Let's look at the next thing. In the base version, the nav li has a display of inline. All right, what does that mean? That means that the li's will be inline, so they'll be side by side. In the desktop, nav li has a display of block. What does that mean? It means that they will be stacked vertically. All right. So, on the mobile version, they're side by side. On the desktop, they're stacked vertically. I don't have anything for links. Oh, and I have, I have list style type none, so it got rid of the bullet points. And I didn't overrule that in the, the, the desktop version, so there's no bullet points on either version, because it's in the base, and it's not overruled in the desktop version. There's nothing about links in the mobile version. What does that mean? It means it'll get the browser default. What's the browser default? Well, blue links. It is overruled on the desktop version. They have a color of white for links, and therefore, our links are white on the desktop version, and our blue in the mobile version. Section, again, has a width of 100%, border one pixel yellow. Section, again, is like nav. Any section has a width of 30%, minimum width, 200 pixels, and float to the left. So these two sections down here will be floated all right, to the left, uh, but only on the desktop version, because the mobile version has to set the width of 100%. Finally, and this is a clever thing, I say any image that's in the section, I make the display nothing. Display none means what? It means you don't see it. So if we look at this, no image, just not there. However, if we look at the desktop version, there is the image. So display of none says not to display the image. In the desktop version, display inline with 100%. Now here's an example that got to your question. With 100%, 100% of what? Well. The image is inside the section, all right? So if I say the image is 100%, that means 100% of this guy's space. How big is this guy? Well, it's 30% of the page. So the image will be 100% of 30%. In other words, it will also be 30% of the page. So notice. How does this get smaller? The image gets smaller, which is kind of neat. This is a characteristic of what we call responsive design. The content of the page takes 
um, cues from the size of the window. Now there's one more piece of code that we that's here, because if you remember, remember back a couple of classes ago, and I'll even download it to show you. I looked at the one, I think it was last class, I looked at the one Star Wars prototype that we built, and I said it almost looks good on a mobile device, but not quite. The reason that it didn't quite look good is it was missing this line of code. Meta viewport content device width equals device width initial scale 1.0 and blah blah blah. What that does is that helps it look correct on a mobile device. Let me take that line out for a second. Take it out and save it. One, one second. That's how it looks without that line. Because I'm not, that sort of tells it, hey, pay attention to the size of the mobile device. And so if I take it out, it's going to look ugly like that. Can you repeat the question? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would do the same thing. You, you could comment it out as well. Let me download real quick the one Star Wars version that we had so we can take a look at it. And I'll insert that line. I think I looked at Star Wars Prototype 2, if I remember right. I think we were talking about this one. And when I viewed it in a mobile device, kind of looked like that, which wasn't really good. I mean, the layout isn't bad in the sense that um, things look about the right width, but the text is really hard to read. And if I pop that line of code in there, that viewport line, that will sort of scale it a little better for a mobile device. So you can add this to the list of code that you have on every single web page. Let me go save it and hit refresh. Yeah, <laughs> might need a little tweaking, but at least it's, it's getting a little closer uh, to the right answer. All right. Any questions about any of this? Yeah. That that's this thing? That is showing you the box. Yeah, that is showing you a particular element, and it's showing you the box. So, for example, this one, the body, it's showing you what the body is. And I can click the header. It shows me the header. shows me the nav, the section, the section. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a way, another way of visualizing the code that you have on there, a, a, a nice tool that you have to visualize that. 
All right. So that is the progressive enhancement way. Two style sheets. The second one applies only to desktop. The first one applies to everyone. So, and they, they need to be in the order of the everyone style sheet goes first. The second one is the style sheet that applies only to the desktop. Everyone gets the original style sheet. Only people that are on a desktop device get the second style sheet. And if there's something in both, then the second one wins. That's sort of the progressive enhancement in, in a nutshell. All right. How do we designate what devices get a style sheet? That's with a media query. And the example we showed was the example of, um, of uh, it applying to a desktop. Let's look at graceful degradation now, which the idea is the same. We're just moving from the other direction. All right. So it's a similar page, but not exactly the same. I didn't do quite as much with this. This is it in a desktop mode. This is it in a mobile mode. Notice again a few things, um, namely um, the picture's gone, the navigation is still stacked vertically, and, and so on. So this is a little bit different than the first one. Let's look at the two, let's look at the code in the two style sheets here. Here's the code. All right. In this case, the first style sheet is called responsive. That's the desktop version. The second one is the mobile. That's the mobile version. Let's look at the two style sheets. Let's look first of all at the first one that applies, which is responsive, and the second one which applies, which is the mobile. All right, mobile's a lot simpler in this case. But the idea is the same. What designates, what gets this second style sheet? Again, the media query. And the media query says, if it's a handheld device, or if it is a screen, it's a, if it's telling me that it's a computer screen, but its maximum width is 480 pixels. And again, if I was going to be consistent, I'd say 600 pixels here, because that was the sort of the flipping point for how I would know if it was a mobile device that was lying to me or not. All right? Um, so if I'd be consistent, I would have said 600 pixels there. But if it's one of those two things, if it's a mobile device, that's what media handheld means. Comma means or. It's a screen that has a minimum width of 480. Well, again, a real computer screen is not going to have a width of 480. All right? So if it is telling me it's a computer screen, but its width is only 480, it's lying to me. And therefore, I'm going to interpret it as a mobile device. All right. Again, I would put these fixes for Firefox and IE up before this. I, again, I have the viewpoint meta tag up here. And again, the, the responsive applies to everyone. So all the scrolling and, and, and floating and all that applies to everyone. The only difference, the only thing that's in the mobile is I'm getting rid of the display of the image. 
And again, I'm only doing that for mobile devices because it's in the second one. So only in the cases where the second one applies. What cases do the second ones apply in? It applies in the case of a mobile device. So only on mobile devices will the image be not displayed. There's a couple ways to set the visibility of an image, by the way. I can say display none, or I can say visibility hidden. Let me change it to visibility hidden and see the difference. What's the difference if I say, that's all right. What's the difference if I say display is hidden versus, uh, or visibility hidden versus display none? It leaves a space, right. So if I say visibility hidden, it's like throwing a sheet over it, right? Um, it's still there, <laughs> all right? It's just not being displayed. So if I say visibility hidden, it still takes up the space that it would have taken. Yes? Okay, so can someone else answer this question? What does hashtag part one mean? Not a class. It's an ID. All right, use a hashtag or a pound sign uh, to indicate an ID. Uh, use a dot to indicate a class. So in this case, where I say pound sign ID, that star rule only applies to things that have an ID of part one. That, would, that, that is a way to do that. And why would you do that? What if I don't want to make every image disappear? I just want to make the images in this section disappear. So that just gives you a finer degree of control over what you're going to change. All right? So you can, you can uh, again, you can apply style rules to a tag. So I can make all images disappear, but maybe I don't want to do that. I can make all images of a given class disappear, and that would be an alternative way to do this. I could make all the images within a certain other tag disappear. So I could make all the images within sections disappear, but not images in the header or nav or whatever. Finally, I can say this specific one thing on the page has this ID, any images in it, I want to disappear. And that's what this code is. I just like to do a variety. Why I did it this way in this case, I just like to do a variety of examples. Again, just to make sure that you catch all the options that you have for defining uh, the CSS rule for something. Other questions? Um, all right, uh, that's all I had uh, for today. Uh, I will ask you, um, I know that I'm the most, not the most prompt person, and I've gotten here uh, you know, one day I was very late because of circumstances, and I'm not always here precisely at the crack of nine, maybe a minute or two after, but please make an effort to be here on time. If there's some extenuating circumstances where you absolutely can't, that's all right. You know, do what you can. You, you do what you have to. But if, if at all possible, uh, it's distracting as people stroll in, um, and again, you know, you're missing a good chunk of the material by coming in late. So I would ask you to try to make an effort for the remaining period of time to uh, arrive on time. All right, we'll see you up in the lab.